I did that for the first time when I did Thursday night football halftimes on NBC. Uh, and I turn to my, I turn to my left, the NBC. Uh, a little bit of a little bit of a nod, to, and all the Howard Stern fans were that's, tweeting at me. That scene, dude. Uh, so and I had no idea if my colleagues at the time knew what I was up to. Uh, it was Rodney Harrison. It was Tony Dungy of uh, Football Night in America, a Pro Football Hall of Famer, and one of my uh, my favorite people I've gotten to meet in this business. Now here on the Rich Eisen Show, how are you, Tony? Hey, Rich, I'm doing well, and welcome to the family. I, NBC. I yeah. appreciate that, Tony. I greatly appreciate that. How are you doing? I saw you in. Uh, uh, your wife, your son, uh, bicycling on your Twitter handle, your Twitter feed the other day. Uh, every, everybody okay out there? Uh, yeah, in- we are. And that's been one of the unexpected blessings. Uh, my son is 28 years old now, real estate business, and we don't get to spend a lot of time together. But he's got time off now. We've got time during the day, and we can get out and ride. So uh, that, that's that been fun. We've got eight young kids still in the house, though, so we're doing Oh, um, my gosh. Lot. Virtual learning and uh, online, and I'm learning about all these apps that our kids have, Edsby, and different learning tools. So I'm getting an education for sure. And I'm sure your your um, your legendary patience um, is being tested. <laughs> <laughs> I have yelled more at my kids in the last uh, week than I did probably with my team in, in 13 years. So. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's all about motivating. It's all about coaching. It's all about, obviously, uh, you know, parenting these days. Tony Dungy here uh, on the the Rich Eisen Show. What what has been, however, obviously, you, you can't go about town. I even saw in your tweet there that you included about uh, letting everyone know that you were doing proper social distancing. Um, but that said, that, that said, what is the sense that you get about Brady signing in Tampa there? Oh, it's been uh, unbelievable. Um, everyone is just hoping we have a season and things get back to normal because the excitement and the the level of expectation now is through the roof. Um, People have always been excited about Buccaneers football and, and, and that, but this off season, uh, no one expected this and and people can't wait. So how do you think uh, the Arians Brady marriage is going to go down? I, I think it's going to be very good. I think Tom is going to elevate the play of a lot of the guys around him. They've got some talented people here. I think Bruce has done a good job of, of putting together uh, some defensive people that can, can create some havoc. Todd Bowles uh, is very creative on that side of the ball. And then offensively, they've got some skill positions. You know, everybody's complained about Tom Brady's weapons the last few years. They have weapons here um, in, in the passing game tight ends, wide receivers, pro bowlers, um, you know, and Tom is, Tom is going to be stirring the drink. So I, I think they're going to be good. I think Bruce has worked with a lot of uh, quarterbacks, and you look at what he did with Carson Palmer when Carson was in his late 30s. I think he knows how to put together a quarterback-friendly offense. Well, and in terms of Arians, you know, on this, I, I love stories like this because, you know, obviously there's coaching trees, coaching lineages, and coaching relationships uh, that I'd like to always put a spotlight on. You and Arians, did you guys share an apartment when you worked for Schottenheimer <laughs> back in the day, 1989, Tony? 1989, we did. Bruce uh, had been the head coach at Temple. He went to Kansas City as the running back coach. I went there as defensive backfield coach. Right. Uh, our both of our families weren't coming until June. We're trying to get housing squared away. So January to June, uh, we shared an apartment and we were roommates for six months, and it was pretty awesome. Is it is it safe to say you were the clean one? He was the messy one. Is uh, that, is it that... was the odd couple to a great extent. Uh, <laughs> I, I learned some language, some words that I, I wasn't familiar with. <laughs> but we had a good time. We really did. We we came very we came very close and. Had three uh, wonderful years together on that staff. I bet, I bet, yeah. And Arians, just again, he's just an old school guy. Um, that again, obviously, uh, who's very demanding, and so is Belichick in a way. So, you know, Brady, the whole narrative of he's searching for a little bit of freedom. Do you think that that? Again, you know, everybody seems to say yes. From we've spoken to Carson Palmer, we've spoken to Marshall Falk, who obviously. Uh, knows about yeah. Arians from from the from the Colts days as well. So, uh, do you think that that is something that Arians and and uh, Brady will be simpatico? Uh, I, I think they will. Uh, as you said, very demanding, very old school. You know, you, Bruce came up under Bear Bryant, so 
he's not a stranger to discipline. But the difference is Tom has spent 20 years with a defensive coach. Now he's with an offensive guy. Very, very similar style, but different thought process. Bruce is created. Bruce is going to push the ball. They're, they're going to score points. And I think Tom's going to enjoy that and appreciate it. Tony Dungy, uh, Football Night in America, NBC Sports here on the Rich Eisen Show. Week before the draft, what, what does a head coach do right now, week before you, a draft? You really have kind of your thought process of what you'd like to see happen. You played out different scenarios in your mind, and now you just want to be sure uh, what, what's going to take place and where you're going to go. I, I remember coming up to the 2006 draft uh, right about this time, the, kind of a week before the draft, we, Edger and James had – signed in free agency with Arizona. We pretty much knew we were going to take a running back. I think we were picking 29th, and who's going to be there? And you go through all these different scenarios. And for us, it was Joseph Adai, Maurice Jones, Drew, Lawrence Maroney. We're going to get one of these guys. What if they're all there? What if none of them are there? What if people uh, call you and two of them are there and you can trade down? What if a run goes on running backs. Do we need to trade up? Those are the kind of things you start to think about in this last month. But you, you kind of have your eye on four or five guys in the, in those first three rounds. Did Peyton Manning ever give two cents on this subject? Because I obviously not really. never. Not really. He, you know, he obviously had his his thoughts and and he'd want to know who was good, who we were looking at. But it was never a type of thing where he'd come in and say, oh, "We ought to take this guy." Now he'd have thoughts on on free agency. Uh, I remember when Brandon Stokely became available, and he pounded the table. Hey, this, this guy, I've thrown to him at the passing academy. He'll be a perfect slot receiver for us. Guys that he had played against and been around. But as far as the draft, he, he kind of left that up to Bill. Well, I mean, and, and so what is the, I guess, what would be the sensitivities of this? Because clearly Peyton Manning knows football, and clearly you want to keep your guy happy, and clearly you want to have him feel included as opposed to let, let let us handle this, Peyton, and you play football. I mean, he's well, more than just that. I don't that. think we ever went that route, but I think in his mind, uh, he understood that we were going to put the team together, we were going to get him weaponry, and um, we are going to get good people. And I think he trusted Bill that way and um, may have had some conversations with him, but he, he really trusted the process and felt like we were going to get quality people and, and, and good people. So um, there wasn't a whole, whole lot of conversation before the draft. Now, as soon as the, the, we picked the guy, now he wanted to know everything. <laughs> what about him? What's his phone number? When can I get to him? I remember, gosh, uh, my last year coaching, we drafted Anthony Gonzalez. Ohio State was, uh, you know, on that system where they don't get out of school until June. So he was, without even talking to us, he drove uh, two times a week to Columbus from Indianapolis, took the playbook up there, went over with Anthony, threw balls, drove back, and he did everything in his power to, to make sure he was ready for training camp. So, yeah, once we got guys, he was all all on board. So who's the guy from uh, your tenure either in Tampa or the Colts that you are that you pounded the table for? in a draft and then you're you're pleased with the result like the the guy that you're like okay i i i believed in the kid and the kid balled out you got an example for that Tony? well I, i'll tell you i'll give you two okay. uh work done was just Derek brooks came into my office at the end of the 96 season and he said you know we need playmakers i played with this kid uh he's great he's a great person he will he will make us a playoff team and he pounds the table to me for two months and so uh our scouts like work everybody had the thought hey he's 175 pounds maybe he can just be a return guy maybe he won't be a full-time guy and uh, once i kind of did the research and with Derek kind of pounding me uh then you know i was sold and, and we ended up drafting work in the first round and he was fantastic for us and that was a little unusual we got hit a little bit taking a little small guy that high but he was phenomenal. The other side of the coin, I remember when Robert Mathis came out. We saw the highlight film, as, other than Barry Sanders, best highlight film I've ever seen. No a college kidding. Player. Oh, he was incredible. Did everything at Alabama and m Made tackles on the kickoff team. Blocked punch. Sacked the quarterback. Chased guys down, you know, 50 yards downfield. In, incredible. But then you say, well, six foot one, two hundred and twenty pounds. Where is he going to play? Defensive end, maybe specialized guy. And Bill Polian 
watched more and more tapes, saw it, and he said, hey, this is just what you're describing to me. You said this is what you want. This is the guy we need to get. So we're in the in the fourth round of the draft, and he said we got a chance to trade next year's fourth round pick to get an extra fifth rounder and take him. And I was like, gosh, I hate to trade those future picks. That's your lifeblood. And he said, do you love this guy? And I said, yeah, Bill, I, I really do love him. I love everything I've seen. I love the attitude. He said, we're going to get him a year early. We're going to take next year's fourth round pick, and you're going to have him for a full year to develop him. we got to do it. So we did. We made the trade with Cleveland, picked him in the fifth round, and 120 sacks later, he's probably going to the Hall of Fame. So uh, I just kind of did the uh, GPSing on it uh, during your answer by by looking it up on the old uh, internets over here. So you must have been in the Kansas City draft process, draft room with just, I guess, to go full circle here with Schottenheimer when you saw the Barry Sanders tape. What did Barry Sanders tape look like? Oh, I- incredible. We're having discussions. And it's if you remember Troy Aikman, and then there's Barry Sanders, oh, yeah. Deion Sanders, oh, yeah. Tony Mandarich, Derek Thomas, and so we're you know we've got these great players that we're looking at. Well, what if it goes this way? What if it goes that way? And we had Christian Okoye, and we had some running backs, and uh, Bruce Arians. You know, if, if this guy is there, we got to take him. And you watch the tape, and it was incredible. But then you watch Derek Thomas. Oh, yeah. And wow. So we knew we were going to get a good player, but Barry Sanders was incredible in college. Well, I mean, so Arians, that's right. He was the running backs coach right there. <laughs> and so that was the end of that. He's like, we got to go get him. But I, it kind of worked out for Derek Thomas. You were drafting fourth overall. Right. I just called that one up. And Dion went fifth. Dion tells a story all the time, Tony, that this was back in the day when the combine had no organization to it in terms of who got to interview whom, and that right. and that you were just standing outside of a hotel room door where the player was inside interviewing with the team, and as soon as they came out, it was a total free for all to grab that guy yeah, you're and take about a fighting guy. Yeah, right. <laughs> in his fist fight, right. hey, I've got to get this guy to my head coach. Yeah. And you better let him go. Yeah. Dion, yeah. was, Dion was telling me that story, and he said he got pulled into a room, and he got pulled into a room by the Giants. And uh, he asked where they drafted, and he said that the Giants said 18th, and he goes, oh, you have no shot at me, and walked out the door. <laughs> yes, and so, I'll give you the background on that. The Giants used to give this personality test oh, yeah. like 200 questions, so they would get a guy, and he'd be in there 45 minutes or an hour, and and – Scouts would be just outside the door waiting, and yeah, it was very, very frustrating. No rules, but yeah, I can, I can see Dion saying that. What you pick where? Yeah, be, no. yeah, you've got no <laughs> shot at me, and he walked out. But that said, you're the D back, you're the defensive backs coach for fourth overall. Did you chat with Dion that combine? Did I, you get I it? I did, but I kind of told him the same thing. Uh, I don't think we're going to take you. Don't think we're going to get you. But you know, you don't know how things are going to fall. But yeah, he was a, a special player for sure. So. That's what you had. You had me watching Deion Sanders, Bill Cowher watching Derek Thomas, Bruce Arians watching Barry Sanders, and, uh, you know, Howard Mudd watching Tony Mandrich. And Howard, to his credit, said, hey, we got a chance to get one of these weapons. Tony Mandrich can only block one guy. Uh, Barry Sanders can make 10 guys miss and score a touchdown. (laughs) He said, we get a chance to take Barry Sanders. There's no way you can take Tony Mandrich. And everybody usually is kind of, you know, sorting their own thing out and trying to make themselves uh, get get good. And, and Howard said, hey, no, I'm telling you, don't even think of Tony Mandridge if we got a chance to get one of these other guys. And it was – I learned something that, that year for sure. I bet you did. Well, I mean, man, what a staff for Marty Schottenheimer back in 89. Before I let you go, you could take only one player in this year's draft. Who would it be, Tony Dungy, in 2020? Um, you know, Joe Burrow is special, but, um, you know – Tua, you've got some quarterbacks. I love Justin Herbert with the, you know, the Oregon connection. So I just think Chase Young, if you got a chance to get this special pass rusher who everybody says is really more dominant than Nick Bosa in college, I, I like that pass rusher. I bet. I, you know, I mean, we, and again, we just saw what uh, what San Francisco did and 
you know, and obviously what uh, what what you can do with a whole fresh set of fingers that you could put in the dirt if you can keep amassing those pass rushers. And we just saw DeForest Buckner winds up now in Indianapolis. Everybody's trying yeah. to everybody's trying to replicate all that. Yeah. Uh, uh, Tony, great chat, man. I I really do uh, appreciate when you call in and um, look for my call. It's going to come more often. Oh yeah, now that we're on the same team, we're, I love it. We are on the same team. Uh, certainly since, you know, you rejected the University of Michigan uh, years before I showed up there. You told Bo, no. Enough. We don't We don't have enough time. For that, story, but... <laughs> Take... yeah, that was your bad, Bo Sembeck. That's my God. But, hey, look, it all worked out for you at Minnesota and obviously now with NBC. You you take care, Tony. We'll chat soon. All right. Thanks, Rich. You got, See you. you got it. That is Tony Dungy right here on the Rich Eisen Show. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.